Ready? Have been for ten minutes. Go. You look like a couple of figures on an Egyptian frieze. Wait a minute, Jane. Say Isis. 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 Chocolates. Cigarettes. Got a gear, got a gear. <laughs> Come on, make yourself useful. Come and take it for us. All right. Careful! Just a minute. What are you pointing at? Just the miracle of new life, that's all. Well, a bit of grass. Watch it, or I'll set her on you. <laughs> bit of grass, indeed. For your information, there's our first pea. One, I might add, of several hundredweight. Most people grow begonias. We're not most people. That's very true. Right. Say, pee, pee. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. Come on the back. Careful. Everything's coming up. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? You planted it. Yeah, but everything's coming up. Come on round. We've got cabbage and lettuces. No, pizza. no, you don't get me like that again. The last time I ended up mucking out your chickens. No, thank you. I'm going home to a nice, boring, civilised martini and a decadent sit-down in my armchair. Sybarite! Peasant! Nice fellow, old Jerry. Wouldn't mind to sit down myself. Ah, ah, ah. Not till we finish the old Ho Chi Minh Trail. Ho, ho, Ho Chi Minh. Any old love me? Any old love me? Around here, you'll be lucky. Any old love me? Hey, it's one of those. Have a couple of steps with that, and we'd have all had a Julius. <laughs> Julius? Yeah, Cockney rhyming slang of old London. Julius Caesar, Calpurnia, Ernia. <laughs> uh, I haven't heard that one before. Interested in all that, then, are you? The old London patois. Patois? Yeah, well, it adds colour to life, I suppose. I understand it originated with the old London cut purses, you know. They made up the slang so that the peelers wouldn't understand what they were saying. Yes, I read that somewhere. No, that is a common ricket that people do commit. Put about by people like Robert Robinson and the brains of Britain and people like that. No, the, uh, sorry, the bloke who actually invented rhyming slang was a bloke who couldn't think up what he was trying to say. So he had to make up a rhyme for it, see? You sure about this? I am the horse's mouth, ain't I? Ah, Tommy Lang, his name was. Tommy Lang slang, see? You mean he couldn't remember his own name? Well, that's how bad it was. Oh, I knew him well. Oh, you mind if I sit down? Oh, my name's Sam, right? What do you think he used to call me? Pork. Pork and ham, Sam, see? I'm beginning to think there's a terrible gap in my education. I've never heard of him. Oh, it must be. He was double famous. I remember seeing him at the Great Exhibition at Crystal Palace. He had a little tent. You paid him a penny, gave him a word and wallop. He'd give you the rhyming slang for it. The Great Exhibition at Crystal Palace? Yeah. That was in 1851. <laughs> that makes you about a hundred and something. Well, did I say 1851? I meant 1951. Yeah, Festival of Britain. Well, I went to the Festival of Britain umpteen times and Tommy Lang was conspicuous by his absence. Yeah. No, <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh... Well, I see you've got your tubing, lady. Oh, my didgeridoo, yeah. Hey? Didgeridoo, flu. <laughs> oh, yeah. That old one, yeah. <laughs> you know, I couldn't help noticing as I come through the garden, like, it's, uh... It's different, isn't it? Very. Yeah. Aren't you going to ask why? Well, it was on the old bacon, like. Uh, and bacon rind, mind. We're digging for victory. Well, that was in the war. What do you think this is? Now, nah, come on, what are you doing? Have you heard of self-sufficiency? Yeah. But I'm self and she's sufficient. Get away. <laughs> Why ain't you got a farm, then? Because we like living here. And sooner or later, somebody's going to come up with a more original question. Whoops. Dropped a coat, have I? Oh, I don't. Dropped a what? Coat. <laughs> coat hanger, clanger. <laughs> You've been dropping those ever since you came through that door. Oh, cockney rhyming slang of old London, you're making this up, you go along. Yeah, well, there is a reason for that. What? I'm a fake. <laughs> Only round the toffee nose district like this, it goes down well. You see all that old costermonger rubbish. They think, hello, bit of her old traditions that hasn't died. <laughs> it's very good for business, puts them in the right mood. <sighs> Talking about business, uh, cough, cough. Cough, cough. <laughs> oh, cough, cough. <laughs> Oh, that's what we agreed, wasn't it? Yeah, tough. 
This is uh, back to your old barter system, eh? <laughs> All part of your health and efficiency. Yeah, self-sufficiency, yeah. Yeah, well, talking about that, you want to keep your eye on those birds, they're picking your shoots to smithereens. Oh, blimey. Go on, get out of here, go on. Go on, hold it, hold it, go on, hold it. <sighs> I'll have to do something about that, you know. Get a bird scare or something. Either that'll sort of take their beaks together. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll keep my eye open for you on me rounds. I'll come across some very strange things in my business. Like us? Yeah. See you then, Squire. See you, Squire. Oi, Flitto! You fellow dicks! Ah, Flitto! Ta! Want to buy a battleship? Oh, don't. Are you all right? I'm just whacked, that's all. I know. It's working a 36-hour day that does it. Is it getting too much for you? Too much? I might tell you, they turn out a pretty gritty sort of chap at Rodine. You weren't at Rodine. <laughs> Neither were you. Come and look at the range. Look at it. Look at it. They don't make them like that anymore. <laughs> well, there, there aren't many of these about, you know. No, you keep kicking it like that, there'll be one less. True, true. Now, do you like it? Yes. I've always wanted a couple of tons of rusty old iron in the kitchen. <laughs> What's it for? Well, uh, it's a range. You, you, you range on it, with it. <laughs> Ranging things. Yes, I know what it is, but what's it for? I mean, we've got a perfectly good cooker. Well, it won't be very much good in a couple of weeks' time when the electricity gets cut off. Think of the saving. Never. <laughs> well, I suppose I could learn to cook with it. I've always wanted to defy the national grid system. Now, this must be the oven. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, lovely. Genuine Victorian dripping. <laughs> <laughs> Including the Victorian dripping, how much do we pay for this? Your hair dryer and the toaster. Oh, thank you very much. No, 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 no. no electricity. No. If you want to dry your hair, stick it in there. <laughs> As for toast, this is the way of making toast. Will you be swapping your electric razor for something soon? I expect so, why? Well, I mean, this thing's so versatile, I want to see how you're going to shave with it. <laughs> Let's start getting the rust off, shall we? Let's get on with it. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Ta. Right, go. Can you see this all black leaded? Not at the moment, no. <coughs> Let's get some air in here. <coughs> oh. They're back again. I thought I told you before. Clear out! Pan's people after you again. <laughs> blasted birds after our seedlings. Oh, God, we can't have that. We broke our backs putting those in. I'm trying to invent something to scare them up. Of course, the old Chinese idea. Kung Fu. <laughs> now, uh, where's the string? Uh, under the sink. Why? Uh, wait a minute. You'll see. Uh, carry on. <laughs> Gosh, thanks, Tom. Well, what do you think? I'm just jealous because you didn't think of it. Barbara, come and see. Barbara! What? Ta-da! What is it? The goat didn't know either. What is it? A Chinese bird scarer. A Chinese bird scarer. Windy <laughs> blow, caney rattle. Birdie sclared. Confusion. Must be. Gosh. Confucius, what happens when the wind doesn't blow? <laughs> I thought you were getting the rust off that range. <coughs> you and your stupid ideas. <laughs> Tom! What are you doing in there? Research. <coughs> Research, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I say, um, perhaps you could help me. Do my best. Right. Now, um, imagine you're a bird, right? <laughs> okay. Right. Now, 
You are in my garden. Am I sitting down or walking about? <laughs> Either. 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 <laughs> now, unbeknown to you, I've rigged a series of tripwires. You hit one with your leg. Not if I'm sitting down. <laughs> well, be walking about, then. It's just the principle I'm trying to establish. It's just the principle. Oh, sorry. Right, I'm walking about your garden, and I'll bang it in one of your tripwires. Right. This sets off the play button of a tape recorder. Oh, yes. Yes. So all of a sudden, as loud as you can imagine, you get this big Count Basie number. Do I? Yes. Now, the point is, would that frighten you? No. <laughs> Why not? I like Count Basie. <laughs> You're a bird, remember? Yeah, well, I don't see why a bird should be frightened of Count Basie. No, you're quite right. Scrub around it. No, it's all a bit Heath Robinson anyway. Let's get back to basics. Now, just answer me this one simple question. What do you think is the best way to scare birds? Flashing on the common, I suppose. <laughs> Have you finished? Yes. Tom. It's Margot. Yes, it is you. Yes. <laughs> Barbara? Just a minute. Oh, the GPO, I see. Me? No, lady. I'm an eccentric millionaire. I get so many phone calls, I have to carry the phone around with me. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> you go in. So you've had to let the phone go. Are things that bad? No. It's just not essential. Not essential, but say I wanted to phone you up. Damn, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> no. I suppose you just have to walk all the way around from next door and speak to us in person. Would you tell Barbara it's Margot, please, Tom? Oh, Barbara. That's Margot over there. <laughs> Hello, Margot. Barbara, what have you been doing to yourself? Oh, it's rust. I've been suffering from it for years. <laughs> Yes. Well, let me show you what I've got. Woodworm. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yes, well, that's what I thought when I bought it, but I'm afraid it was a terrible mistake. Oh. Look, look. Jolly expensive mistake. Well, that's not important. The point is, Barbara, I got it home, I put it on, and I said to myself, Margot, that simply looks cheap and nasty. So I wondered if you'd like it. <laughs> Margot, you are the mistress of the unfortunate phrase. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. Look, I simply thought of you because, well, I'd have only thrown it away. And I know how difficult things are. I mean, I saw the telephone being taken away. Well, that's all right. I haven't worn the telephone for years. <laughs> Don't be defensive, Barbara. You know very well what I mean. No. Well, this fetish that Tom has recently about making you do without... Surely anything is welcome. Well, I tell you what I would like. Anything, Barbara, you know me. A nice bowl of gruel. I haven't eaten for four days. Very well, Barbara, take that attitude. I was merely trying to be charitable. Look, Margot, when they have a flag day for me, you can put a penny in the box, OK? I should take it. It's a very nice dress. Oh, I don't need hand-me-downs. So be it. I feel totally humiliated, Barbara. If that was your objective, thank you very much. Nevertheless, I know my manners, and I will say this. You are still always welcome to drop in and Jerry and me whenever you feel like it. You know that. All right, Margot, thanks. I'll see you out. Well, thank you very much, Tom. Margot? Yes? Give me the dress. Yes. <laughs> That's probably the best way to do it. I suppose you do think of her sometimes. Yes. Oh, have the bag as well. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> I thought so. I told you I don't want that thing. It's not for you. But who's it for? I want it. Why? You see. <laughs> you look cheap and nasty in it. <laughs> Lovely day. This is the day I shall remember. The day I Fresh egg for your tea. Don't try to butter me up with fresh eggs. I want an explanation. It's a scarecrow. 
I know what it is. I want to know why you are trying to humiliate me in front of the whole neighborhood. I'm not. I'm utilizing something you didn't want. Oh, yes. And thereby telling the world and his wife that Margot Ledbetter's clothes are only fit for scarecrows. But where are all these people and how do they know it's your dress? Well, I know, and that's enough. Thank you very much. I certainly shan't get a wink of sleep tonight knowing that I'm being abused in your garden. <laughs> if you were being abused in my garden, you wouldn't get a wink of sleep, would you? Tom, either you take down my dress or I shall call the police. <laughs> And I'm aware that that didn't come out right, but you know what I mean. Oh, oh. Well, I, I don't want to bludgeon you, Tom. Don't kid yourself. I just realised your rotten dress doesn't scare the birds. <laughs> oh, no, girl. Useless. The birds love this dress. I wonder if Francis of Assisi wore something like that. Are you going to give me a hand now, Tom? Uh, sorry, love. Bit busy. You missed a bit. Thank you. <laughs> what are you doing? Cutting out cardboard shapes. That's you being busy then, is it? Oh, yes, yes. A couple of dozen of these, shaped like hawks, and suspended over the garden, right? They cast their shadows. And it's a well-known fact that the shadow of a predatory bird scares the living daylights out of the little also rans. I don't know why I didn't see it before. No, I wish you had. It's great, this, isn't it? Everything in our kind of life is a challenge. None of that boring, repetitive bit. <laughs> I mean, the human animal wasn't meant to be a robot. Not meant to be, no. Oh, yeah. well, sure, we don't get much leisure time these days, but who needs it? I mean, take Margot and Jerry. You know, right now they're probably lolling about in their Swedish armchairs, sipping martinis, vegetating in front of their colour telly. <laughs> I mean, who'd swap for that? I'm bloody <laughs> uh, something wrong? Yes, I'm sick to the sight of that thing. I'm tired, I'm filthy. I feel 120, I must look 180. Well, why didn't you say? <laughs> well, I just thought you might have noticed. Oh, come on. We've never gone in for all that. There's something wrong and you've got to guess what it is, Robert. Well, you don't have to guess, actually. Just look at me. All right, you're filthy. So what? All right, it's not actually just me being filthy. What really gets me is you chirping away about how lovely it all is. But it is. Well, it isn't today, actually. It isn't today. Oh, of course I'm sorry, love. I don't keep track of dates anymore. Oh, God, it's not that. Oh, no, I actually mean what I've been saying. You're chirping about those birds and I'm stuck on my knees with this thing. All right, all right, very well. I'm not sure I like the term chirping. But if you mean that this life makes me happy, yes, it does. And I thought it made you happy. Well, it doesn't today. I mean, it did yesterday, probably will tomorrow, but it just doesn't today. But I'm sure there's a joy in everything we do now. What, scraping half a ton of rust off that thing? Well, yes, even that. I mean, even the grotty jobs I, I find enjoyable. Oh, yes, digging up that tree stump. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm not saying it was easy, but there was a joy in it, albeit a sort of... Savage, primeval joy. You lying hound, you chucked the pickaxe at the goat. <laughs> well, I mean, that was just a move. Well, what do you think I'm in? And if you actually want to know today, this moment now, this minute, if I would rather be sitting in an armchair with a drink or kneeling on the floor getting rusty with that thing, I would. Once more, I'm bloody well going to. Sniggering, Jerry. It's no good trying to camouflage it because I can see your shoulders quivering. Uh, it does have a funny side, doesn't it? I mean, you pay fifty-five pounds for a new dress, and it ends up on Tom's scarecrow. <laughs> I didn't pay fifty-five pounds for it. I charged it to your account. <laughs> how much? Don't say how much like that, Jerry. It's not an exorbitant figure. It is when it comes out of my account. Well, that wouldn't have been necessary if you weren't so penny pinching with my clothing allowance. Penny pinching? I could buy a third <laughs> car out of your clothing allowance, a big one. I would said a bicycle, personally, Jerry. As it is, I have to scour Bond Street for basically shoddy clothes, which are really only fit for scarecrows. Good God, Margot! I mean, fifty-five pounds. Barbara would buy three dresses for that money. Yes. What do you mean, yes? I mean that the homespun suits Barbara. I've always thought you looked rather cute. Oh, I see. 
So you're married to a frog, are you? How on earth do you make that equation? I didn't make any equation, Jerry. You're the one who used the word. The word frump never passed my lips. It didn't need to. It was written all over your face. Frump, 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 frump. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Door, please, Jerry. That cute girl from next door. Barbara! Well, you said drop in, so I did. It's lovely to see you. Do sit down. Chair, please, Jerry. <laughs> Don't embarrass Barbara, Jerry. It's just a hole in her tights. I was looking at her legs, actually. Mm, well, I suppose it's better than looking at a frump all day. Oh, I'm sorry. I've obviously come at the wrong moment. Oh, no, 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 dear. Jerry was just having one of his little tantrums. Just give it a rest, shall we, Margaret? You're the one who started this silly argument, Jerry. Suppose the mer just. Well, I must say, you're looking very... <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I shouldn't really have come round to you like this. Oh, heavens above, dear. We're old friends. What does it matter? Lift up a moment, would you? <laughs> <laughs> drink. How about a drink? Oh, yes, please, Jerry. Two dry martinis. Oh, have you been doing to yourself? You look worse than you did this morning. Well, we've got this old range, you see. What with that and the electricity going off soon. As well as the fence. Mm, and I've been trying to get the rest off it all day. Well, just you. What about Tom? Oh, he's been trying to invent the ultimate deterrent in bird scarers. Yes, well, the less said about that episode, the better. Thank you very much. Thank you, Terry. Jerry, we do have larger glasses. She said you wanted two drinks. Damn right. Cheers. <laughs> Something wrong, chez toi, Barbara? No, 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 no. You wouldn't have silly little arguments, would you? No. No, no. N well, oh, all right, give in. Yes, we did have a silly argument, I suppose. Really? Hmm. What about? Well, I've been on this blasted range all day, and there just comes a point when rust ceases to be a novelty, and I suppose it corroded my sense of humour. Well, I'm not surprised. I mean, it's hardly a woman's work, is it? No, I didn't mean that. No, I agree with Margot, actually. Oh, Jerry agrees with Margot. Hang out the flags. Three cheers. <laughs> I agree with you, Margot, because on this occasion, you just happen to be right. Our opinions do coincide sometimes. I'm sorry, Jerry. Not at all. You ought to watch Tom, you know. He'll have you yoked to a plough next. He's just an armchair revolutionary, old Tom. You're the one who has to man the barricades, or... Woman, the barricades, I suppose. No, that's head. not strictly true. <laughs> no, Jerry's right. Let me see your hands. I'm sorry to say this, Barbara. Those are the hands of a navvy. I rest my case. No, you've got it all wrong. You make Tom sound like the squaw man. I mean, he does his share more than his share. Well, I've always admired your loyalty. Now, when was the last time that Tom suggested you had a lie in? This morning, actually. I didn't get up till half past six. <laughs> you do that in the army. I'm sorry to say this, Barbara. He has turned you into a drug. <laughs> if you allow it to continue, you'll become like one of those wrinkled old crones that one sees on the continent. You missed a bit. I wouldn't put it exactly like that. No, Margot's right. Marriage must be a fair division of labour. Like ours? No, no, not exactly like ours. I was thinking more 50-50. <laughs> Meaning what, Jerry? Meaning not 80-20. I would hardly call keeping this house in immaculate condition a mere 20%. You don't. Mrs Pearson comes in five times a week. Well, there is the garden. Yes, I know. Mr Pearson comes in three times a week. <laughs> I pick and arrange all my own flowers, Jerry. I bet you wouldn't do that if the Pearsons had a daughter who did flower arranging. <laughs> I don't know what has prompted this poisonous outburst, Jerry. Uh, but since we are dragging skeletons from under the bed... Oh, get your metaphors right. Please, skeletons come out of a cupboard. Well, thank you very much for correcting me in front of guests. I really must apologise for Jerry, Barbara. Yes, go I... on. Well, the manners of some people. Extremely rude. A surprise for you. I like that. I like that very much. Got the tree stump in there. I thought we'd get chill brains together in front of that. <laughs> That'll be nice. There you are. Oh. Oh. 
Kettle's boiling. Oh, coffee. Oh, and Barbara, mm. I want you to remember one thing. Whatever you do, whenever you take anything off this range, always use the oven glove. Thermal conduction of metal, see? Mm. E equals MC squared, right? Right. right. Coffee coming up. when I left. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Friday. Friday night is row night. Mm, glad we don't have rows. Oh, yeah. Oh, golly, hope they haven't come here for the second round. <laughs> I tell him we've got foul pest. <laughs> Evening, Squire. Hello, Sam, come in. Oh, that's a nasty burn you've got there. It's not a burn, it's a bruise. Bruise. <laughs> oh, Evening, lady. I just thought I'd... Well, look at that. Who put all the work in on that, then? He did. did. She did. <laughs> well, if I'd known it was going to come up like that, I would have knocked you for your vacuum cleaner as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sam, not that you're not welcome round the old cat and mouse. Eh? Hey? Cockney rhyming slang, cat and mouse. How's it? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> well, what are you doing here? What am I? Oh, yeah. Well, you asked me if I'd look out for a bird scarer for you. Well, I have got one in here. There you go. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sheer car. Wonderful. That's brilliant, Sam. How much? Well, to anyone else in the road, an electric toothbrush. But to you, nothing. Oh, Sam, thanks ever so much. He's beautiful. You want some coffee? No, I think I'd better be on my way. I say, you're looking a bit sharp tonight, aren't you? Have you got a date? <laughs> no, I'm going to my evening class, actually. Oh, yeah? Well, you're taking O-level totting. <laughs> no. <laughs> Spanish. Well, I've got a villa out there, see? So I oh. thought I'd clean up the... <laughs> <laughs> well, winners notches, muchachos. <laughs> 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 No, 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 no. None of that lap dog business. It's a cat. Well, none of that lap cat business, then. <laughs> that is a working animal. It's all right, Rover. His bark's worse than his bite. Come on, give him to me. Come on, come here. Come here. Now then. Now listen, stupid. <laughs> That's right. Look at me when I'm talking to you. <laughs> now look. Now over here, look. <laughs> now if you want the old saucer of milk, cod's head, the old tickle under the chin, right? If you want all that, you've got a graft, right? Out there, birds. You chase birds, got it? Right. <laughs> right, and kill! Oh, oh, God. God. Oh, it's a bit small. Well, they're not vultures out there, you know. Well, not so far, no. Well, that's another problem solved, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Always providing, of course, he does chase birds. <laughs> oh, my God, what's that? <laughs> he chases birds, all right? He's in the chicken run! Oh. 